Every season of Big Brother is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Big Brother has great characters that will have you rooting for their success or hoping for their failure. You will want to tune in episode after episode to see what happens next until you see who is crowned as the winner. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get evicted or win the game. We will look at the character moments and important strategic moves they make to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And for reference, we will be doing this by only observing what the edited TV show is showing us. No future seasons will be mentioned as the characters here have no idea and therefore unaffected by those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the show is trying to tell us and may be rearranged to craft a more cohesive story. So with that out of the way, let's open the book on Dr. Will Kirby of Big Brother 2. Before we start, I wanna thank you all for supporting this channel. If you wanna see these videos weeks before they're ever released here on YouTube, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes this channel possible, so thank you. You have a bunch of freaks and weirdos in there and I like to make fun of them. Will Kirby, a 24-year-old doctor, was the winner of Big Brother 2. And when he won, it blew everyone away how someone can openly be called the evil doctor by the other people he lives with. He lies, deceives, and does it all with a smile on his face, and yet is still capable and does win the game. So how does he pull it off? Let's find out. It is week one of Big Brother 2, and first impressions can tell you a lot about a person. And in this case, the first time we hear from Dr. Will is before he ever enters the house. He tells us right up front that he is cocky and he loves fat, spelled P-H-A-T, 70s clothes, and he guarantees that by episode five, he will have a girl washing his clothes. It's all very tongue in cheek and clearly he's just here to have a good time. I really am the world's leading authority on fat 70s clothes. Dr. Will enters the house and all of the house guests are introducing themselves to one another. Cheryl Braxton is 44 and a mother. While talking about how she doesn't want to say how old her kids are, we get Dr. Will's first assessment of someone in the house. Sherry, any way you look at it, is hot. And I hope her 17-year-old son isn't watching this because I'm like embarrassed that I'm gonna, that, you know, I think it, her, his mom is hot. Yeah, that's right. The first thing he tells us about anyone in the house is how hot the lady who is 20 years older than him is. It's a weird moment and I won't label it bad or good, but he does reemphasize that this is not a one-time thought later on in the week. Sherry is just your consummate smoking mom. I can't think of any fault in her as a hot mom. She's just smoking. Will introduces himself to the other house guests and tells them all that he is a doctor. And right away, we hear from Krista, who immediately recognizes that Will is a threat and he has come into this house with a game plan in his head. While it isn't clear what tipped her off to this, it isn't good to be labeled as a threat, especially on day one. Will is gonna be some very tough competition. He has a game plan in his head that's like the gears are just turning and turning and turning and they don't stop. He's definitely a threat. The first competition of Big Brother 2 is for a brand new car, which is exciting. However, it is seen as something that could get you targeted if you win it. So Will wisely steps out of the competition. Kent ends up winning the car. We have a winner! It's the lights in. are flashing now. Later on, the house guests are chilling and playing a game of spin the bottle. Will notices how Kent, the one who won the car, is sitting out and not participating in the game. He questions how when someone purposely separates himself from the group, if you can truly trust them or not. He sat out. When you initially have this group mentality and someone ostracizes themselves, and it makes you kind of wonder if you can count on them in the future. A couple days later, we see a montage of Nicole complaining and whining and basically not having a positive attitude about anything. Will points out how he thinks her and him will butt heads, but it won't be an exception since it seems like she will butt heads with anyone. I think that she and I, given time, will butt heads, but it appears as though she's gonna butt heads with anybody. He is proven correct when later on she thinks that he doesn't like her and he assures her that's not the case and smooths things over between them. I feel that you have a real distaste for me um, and I'm trying to conquer my I have a distaste fears. for you? Yeah. Uh, uh, please don't think that. And I apologize if I gave that impression. It's well, nothing like that whatsoever. After that, Krista is talking to Bunky about who he thinks will hook up in the house. He says it will probably be Dr. Will and we immediately cut to Will and Shannon flirting 
and being extra friendly with each other. As of now, they seem to be resisting a relationship, but the tension between them is palpable, and it seems inevitable that they will end up together. Will frames this relationship to us as something that will help him get far in the game because he thinks Shannon is a strong player who will make it to the end. While this is yet to be seen, the sequence between them is fun, and Will is already showing a knack for taking things that seem like one thing and framing them within how he is playing the game. I think Shannon is one of the strongest players um, in the house right now, and I first see her being, you know, in the final three, if not winning the whole thing. So in Big Brother, each week of the game, there's a competition to see who will become head of household. That head of household then picks two people out of everyone in the house to be nominated for eviction leaving the rest of the house basically safe. However, the head of household cannot vote between the two people and only votes in the case of a tie. The house, the rest of the people who are safe, are the ones who vote who goes home. Mike Boogie wins the first head of household competition and for the first week's nominations, he picks Nicole and Cheryl with the intent of wanting Nicole to go home and having Cheryl as the pawn. Will is safe. I nominate you, Nicole, and I nominate you, Cheryl. Now, with the knowledge that he is safe this week, we really start to see how some people truly think about Will. Their first impressions are not great. Bunky says he thinks he wants Will gone because... One of the two nominations is going to be Will. Will is being a dictator, and he needs to go. Kent doesn't like Will because he has no sympathy as a doctor. Now, what we hear from Will on the show is how when a convict comes in to the hospital and gets cleaned up by a doctor, Will has no sympathy for the convict. But Kent says that Will says he has no sympathy for the parents of a child who is dying. Even though that's not what we saw, perception is reality for Kent, who is telling Bunky this as well. He said, he said he has no sympathy. If he sees the parents of a child who is dying, he just says, hey, get over it. I'm like, in your doctor, pal. Moving on, Will decides he wants to see how much power he wields and proposes to everyone go on a 24-hour fast since, uh, well, they've all been giving in to the seven deadly sins. Will Ali doesn't mention lust as one of them since he has been indulging in that one with Shannon. Some people do the fast, others don't. It's a mixed bag, but most of all, he says he wants to be the puppeteer. Bunky then says how he finds Will to be annoying and a dictator and tells Nicole he wants him gone, and Nicole agrees. Tomorrow morning, um, I will be initiating a voluntary fast um, that everyone has agreed to partake in. I can be the puppeteer and they can be the marionettes. Follow him like sheep, but go ahead. Will and Mike on the chopping block. One of them is definitely going right. no matter what. Right. Will then says he hopes he's being underestimated, but with three people already saying they think Will's a threat, he's really failing at this goal. Especially when later on Krista says that if she becomes HOH, then Will is gone. I hope that everyone has underestimated my potential for, um, for just massive destruction. But uh, God help I get head of household because he's gone. We haven't even got to the first eviction when Will's relationship with Shannon heats up. Him and her have been cuddling for what he claims is just for warmth. The cuddling is um, solely for warmth. <laughs> but by the end of episode three, they have kissed and Will says that her old boyfriend is gone. He's out of here. I do have a message for her boyfriend at home. Um, he's out of here. It's time for the vote, but before that can happen, we learn that Justin, another house guest, held a knife to Krista's throat while they were both drunk and asked her if it would be cool if he killed her. Uh, he is expelled, which leaves one less person in the house for Will to contend against. Justin, the bartender from Bayo, New Jersey, threatened house guests with violence and physical intimidation. We then learn that there is already a split in the house between Will, Shannon, and Mike Boogie, and everyone else, leaving Will in the clear minority. Two pretty strong factions are forming in this house. The Chilltown faction, the Brat Pack. The other faction is the real people in the house. Uh, the Monicas, the Hardys, um, Autumn. It's time to vote for either Cheryl, Will's weird crush, or Nicole, who thought Will disliked her. Will says he is voting for Nicole and claims she did the one thing he never want, ever, ever wanted to happen to him. She singled me out and ostracized me and made me into the one thing that I didn't want to be characterized at, which was the bookworm, the nerd. I vote to evict Nicole. The votes are revealed, and Cheryl is surprisingly sent home in a five to three vote, meaning Will was in the minority. By a vote of five to three, Cheryl, you are now evicted from the Big Brother house. That's it for week one, and we have learned so far that Will is cocky, funny, 
a leader, and he knows all of this and owns it. However, his cockiness has blinded him and made him fall into the Minority Alliance, which is currently outgunned and outmanned 7-3. After two long weeks, he has an uphill battle to fight to get himself out of this hole that he dug himself into. Week 3 begins with the aftermath of the Cheryl vote and Chilltown was completely blindsided. Bunky and Krista are talking about who they would like to see go home next. Bunky says he wants Will gone since he has not taken the time to get to know him and has also made fun of him. This is followed up by a few other house guests, essentially echoing what Bunky said. This is bad on Will as he has had plenty of time to form relationships with everyone in the house. Will, Shannon, and Mike. <laughs> Definitely Will. Either Will and Mike or Will and Shannon. Yeah, Will always makes fun of me the other way, sweetheart. Me too. Will makes but that's fun just his of me. personality. I would be a lot more comfortable if he would just leave. Later on, Will tries apologizing to Nicole, but with that apology, he screws up by saying he hates Nicole, but not as much as he hates other people. You're someone who I hate. You're not uh, one of my best friends, but there's someone I hate much more than you. You but should have no hate for me. You have no reason to have you're any you're hate for me. Right. You're not, absolutely not right. Not Will came up to me, who hasn't looked at me, literally even looked at me in two days. Hey, you know, I'm really sorry, I suck, and, and the entire time, I'm like, you're right, you do suck. Mike Boogie, Will's ally and friend, says that at this point, Will cannot win. He's made far too many enemies to get people's votes at the end. It was one thing to hear this from the other house guests earlier, but Boogie saying it means that this must be universally understood that Will's a villain with no shot to win, considering that they're like best friends and close allies. Will's not a threat, which he isn't. Well, he's not going to win the game. He's got way too many enemies. With Krista as head of household and everyone not liking Will, it would seem like an inevitability at this point that he will be nominated. However, the nominations are revealed and that is not the case. He's not nominated. In fact, no one from Chilltown is nominated for eviction. Instead, it is Autumn and Kent. Krista views Will as a non-threat to win the game. I nominated Kent and Autumn. I don't feel that Will's a threat anymore because of the fact that in the end, no one will vote for him. Hardy is not happy about these nominations. Will says he recognizes that the differences between Hardy and himself is that Hardy tries to represent himself as noble and perfect. I think his modus operandi is that he's going to try to just be the nice guy, be Mr. Sensitive, and then you know hope to sneak into the finals of the show. However, immediately following that, Hardy says that Will and Chilltown are all sons of bees. I only have one goal. Let's take those sons of bitches out of here. Mm -hmm. what the three brat pack. Mm -hmm. That seems to be working because I think a lot of people here are very naive. Which can be interpreted a couple of ways. One is that you can believe what has been shown in the show so far by Hardy and his morals, and therefore him getting upset about Chilltown means they must really be villains. Or you could see it the same way Will does, where uh, you can tell that what Hardy is doing is mostly an act that he's putting on for TV. As of now, we're being led to believe Hardy based on the house's perception of Will, but it is something to keep track of the rest of the season. At the food competition, it is between the men and the women for who will be stuck eating peanut butter and jelly all week. Will is the final male, and if he blows it, he will lose it for the men. Seeing as how even Hardy couldn't do it, Will knows he has no chance and takes one last chance to rub it into the girls face about how they already had to eat peanut butter and jelly before. I'm a new sheriff in town, and this is his badge. Oh, okay. This almost perfectly encapsulates what we have seen of Will so far. Fun, but cocky. I'm not gonna just bow over and give them whatever they want whenever they want. So, um, <laughs> so I went inside and got some peanut butter and showed it to them to remind them who was the boss. It is almost eviction time, but we first see a montage of the relationship with Shannon and Will and how quickly it has blossomed over these three weeks. At first, Shannon wanted nothing to do with him, but now they're clearly a couple. However, we then get a surprise segment with Shannon's boyfriend at home, who isn't sure what to make of his girlfriend and Will kissing on TV and being lovey-dovey in the house. I don't know what's going through Shannon's head and I don't know what's going through Will's head, if this is just strategy to them or it's, you know, actually passion. And says that uh, Will should face him man to man. You know, Will, I'd like you to be a man and say it to my face. At 165 pounds, I think he, he should bring Hardy with him. It's humorous and almost nonsensical, but it doesn't put Will in a good light. It is time to vote and everyone unanimously votes Autumn out of the game. She wasn't a part of the Chilltown Alliance, so this is a win-win for them. By a vote of seven to zero, Autumn, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. 
Hardy wins head of household and this is not good news for Will. It spells doom actually because Hardy expressed his great dislike as we know for Chilltown, which Will is a part of. It seems like we all have closure on Shannon and her boyfriend at home as she says she will break up with him for Will. This may feel like a personal victory for Will, but it goes to show that he is a relationship wrecker. Unsurprisingly, at the nomination ceremony, Hardy nominates both Will and Shannon for eviction, which leaves them in a conundrum as neither wants the other one to go home. As you guys know, uh, Shannon, I nominated you, and Will, I nominated you. Nothing really personal. Wow, that was probably about the cowardest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. You're the closest in the whole house. To who? Each other? Yeah. And what but does that have to do with me? Nothing, just what I said. You can take it however you want. Will is in the diary room with Shannon and he says to her that he wants to bail out and voluntarily exit the game. She tells him that he needs to stay and fight with Boogie and she can go home since Hardy isn't going to be intimidated by her, but he could be intimidated by Will. She ultimately does convince him, but this is a huge weakness by Will and shows that his head is not in the game at all at this point. You're gonna stay here with Boogie and make his life hell. We then see a montage of the people in the house framing Chilltown as bad people who are unworthy to be playing the game, let alone win it. Chilltown is a wolf pack of vain, arrogant, immature narcissists. This is followed up by Will saying that Hardy's nominations are dumb, which is untrue from Hardy's standpoint in the game, but it just shows how not in tune Will is with everyone else right now. Well, that was just a dumb move anyway you look so at it. so dumb. He's just dumb. He's gonna find out why someone owns a club and why someone works the door. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon decides it's time to take revenge on Hardy for what she perceived as him laughing at her. She takes his expensive electric toothbrush and uses it on the toilet. This gets her in trouble with Big Brother, and Will says nothing, just letting her dig her own grave. What just happened, sweetie? Nothing, I'm just, uh, I'm just a little choked up right now. About what? Why are you laughing? I'm not, I'm upset. Why are you sad then? But I understand that you're not smart enough to play the game and that's how you feel how you have to play. It's why are you sitting where you're sitting and why am I sitting where I'm sitting? It is time for eviction, but first we see everyone letting Will and Shannon have a cute date together before one of them goes home. While we may not like how they ended up together, it is clear they're a cute couple. Big Brother then shows us a segment from both Will's mom and Shannon's mom. Will's mom says that at home, he isn't an evil doctor in real life. He's just doing this in the house. Shannon's mom says she doesn't like Will at all. However, it is hard to take her opinion seriously since she applauds Shannon using Hardy's toothbrush on the toilet, making her uh, an unreliable source of morality. When Shannon cleaned the toilet with uh, Hardy's toothbrush, that was probably payback big time. I'm proud of Shannon on that one. That'd, that'd be something I'd do. <laughs> Will then tells us his read on the upcoming eviction where he thinks he's the next to go and Shannon will be sticking around. I think people will vote to evict me just because they're scared and stupid. However, Shannon is voted out unanimously, six to zero, and Will tells her that he will avenge her. By a vote of six to zero, Shannon, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Your eviction will be avenged with great wrath. Count on it. Shannon is gone. Chilltown is now down, six to two, and Will has promised to avenge his girlfriend. Now that I'm single, I'm gonna try to hook up with Nicole. So far, Will has been thinking with his emotions and not with logic. Maybe Shannon's departure can flip the script. Kent wins head of household, and Will assumes his chances of being nominated are very high, and at this point, he's right. I anticipate that um, I will be nominated again this week, so I'm not even unpacking my bag. Will decides it is time to sweet talk Kent and start cutting deals to save himself. He tells Kent that he is easily beatable at the end, so why waste your reign as head of household eliminating him when there are bigger targets on the board. This seems to work as Kent tells Bunky that Will isn't a threat and Kent cuts a deal with Will that says if Will's not evicted and wins head of household next week that he won't nominate Kent. Will agrees to this deal. If I don't nominate you, will you give me amnesty when you become the head of household? Certainly. Will you? Okay. I promise you that. I made a deal with the devil, i.e. Kent. Immediately after agreeing to that deal with Kent, Will reveals to us that he has no plan to uphold his end of the bargain and says he will nominate Kent if given the chance. 
I'm gonna nominate Kent and Hardy next week as soon as I get by this week. It's just a matter of keeping Mike Boogie really close. Interestingly, Krista, after last week where she didn't view Will as a threat at the end, is now telling Nicole not to underestimate Will. Having anyone view you as a target is not good and Krista seems to be back on viewing Will as a target. Everybody thinks though that Will's easily out of here. Do not underestimate him. Well, the beauty of having me in this house is that I'm the biggest liar in the house, maybe the biggest liar in California, and let's go on a limb here, possibly the biggest liar in America. It is time for the nomination ceremony. Mike Boogie is nominated, which was to be expected, but shockingly, Krista is the other nominee. Will's deal works and keeps him off the block. Will, you are safe. Now that Will has saved himself, he gets to work on saving Mike, who is in a similar situation to Will from last week. You see, Mike and Krista have had a blossoming romance as well, but now with both of them on the block, Mike is depressed and wants to leave. Will convinces Mike to stay and tries to convince Nicole to keep Mike. He seems to think he has her on his side, but in all actuality, she seems to be very non-committal. Is it so far-fetched to think that you and I, Boogie, could start an alliance? No. An undercover, completely quiet, you know? No. It is time for the eviction episode, but first, we are shown how Hardy used to hate Will, but now they have a mutual respect for each other. But we do have, I think, you know, some level of uh, respect and understanding toward each other. That's basically it. However, Bunky still doesn't trust him. I guess Hardy's strategy is, well, I guess I'll make friends with Will. It works for you, Will. But I just, I just don't trust Will. Will votes for Krista and is the only one who votes for her as Mike is evicted four to one. By a vote of four to one, Mike, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Paroled! Will stayed loyal to Mike, and this is important to do as everyone who's evicted is on the jury and gets to watch all of the episodes at home. It is time for the head of household competition, and Will's deal with Kent says that if Will wins HOH, he will not nominate Kent. However, Will doesn't win HOH, so we won't know if he would have actually nominated Kent or not. However, Hardy wins it for the second time, and this isn't bad as we just saw him and Will have a mutual respect for each other, and it is reinforced later when Hardy tells Nicole, hey, he likes Will. But see, like, yeah, because I, I can deal with Will. I actually like Will. So, a new major storyline begins to emerge between Will and Nicole, where Will seems to be just pushing her buttons for fun, but seems to also be semi-serious. He accuses her of falling in love with him, and she denies, denies, denies. It is a fun moment, but the villainy is that he's just doing it to screw with her. What she actually misses is her husband, who she has actually only been married to for a month prior to getting on the show. Did you f say that in the diary? Yes, how many times do I have to tell you? I said, Why I think Nicole is that? falling in love with me. Because I think you are. She was denying it, but I could tell that that Nicole really is in love with me. He is a freak. It is time for the nomination ceremony, and despite Will having gained Hardy's respect and Hardy saying he likes him, Will is still nominated. Will, you're the last, uh, you're the last remaining factor of Chill Town. However, it seems like Will is just the pawn this week, since that is what Hardy tells him, and how Hardy talks about Kent at the nomination ceremony. It does seem to back it up. This seems like it should be good news, but when Cheryl was the first evicted house guest, she was also the pawn. Being a pawn does not guarantee safety. I think Will should feel somewhat safe, perhaps, because of the actions that Kent's been taking and, and you know how people are reacting to what he's doing. Kent is mad that he is nominated, and he lets everyone know it. This pleases Will to no end as he finds the greatest delight in watching the others turn on each other. And you have to ask yourself, um, can anyone take pleasure in watching groups of people get angry at each other and tear each other apart verbally, psychologically, and emotionally? I love it. I love to watch them pull each other apart. They're ripping at each other like carnivores. It's like a headhunter fest and they're all trying to eat each other's brains out. This is then contrasted by us finding out that Will has a soft spot for nature and animals as he has been working on befriending a little bird for the past week. There's a little bird that comes by. I feed him occasionally. His name is Little Mo. Every day I'm going to get him a little closer until he eats out of the hand. I'm probably one of the biggest animal lovers you've ever met. Every Monday, the house has a Monday meeting. This is designed as a public forum to talk about anything the house guests want with everyone else. Sometimes it's peaceful and sometimes it's crazy. This time, it's crazy, as Kent has concocted what he thinks is a brilliant scheme to throw Hardy under the bus. While it isn't clear how this should make Will a target over Kent, it actually creates a perfect opportunity for Will to solidify 
why the house should keep him as Kent blows up on everyone, but Will remains cool, calm, and collected. But everybody in this room, if you want to win this game, there's a man you got to worry about. He's the biggest threat in this game because he's the most competitive. He's good looking, always had his way. He's smart. Sit no, you down. don't talk to me unless Sit I want to talk to you. No, I'll talk to you right now. Yeah, no, you won't. What did you I don't have to listen to any of your shit. Was you it, lie. Was it You're true? a liar. Did you? Why don't you tell everybody who's going to be standing beside you when this game's enough? Who's number two, Hardy? Kent is really on track with this. Um, you know, I don't like the guy. I think he's a snake and I think he's gross. But the guy really knows what's happening in this house. This is then followed up by Will telling us that he lies 150 times a day. I throw out about 100 to 150 lies a day and maybe two or three stick. Which seems like in and of itself is probably a lie. I mean, it means he's lying over six times an hour, assuming he doesn't sleep. But... Who knows? Krista then drops a bomb on Will's lap that even we didn't know about. There is a secret alliance between Hardy, Monica, and her. So maybe Kent was onto something at the Monday meeting? It is great that Krista feels like she can trust Will enough to tell him this. Today I had confirmation from Krista of all people that she is in a secret alliance that has been present since day three with Hardy and Monica. So Kent was right? So now that Will has this information from Krista, he has two options when it comes to utilizing it. One is that he can keep it to himself, or two is that he can go tell someone else to make sure it spreads and costs mass chaos. Krista said that her, Hardy, and Monica have had an unspoken pact. He chooses option two by telling Nicole almost immediately what he knows which is very risky, and Nicole goes and tells Hardy that she knows about the Alliance. I didn't think it was important for me to know that Chris is double-crossing me. I didn't know that. I want you and Monica to hurt the top three. This somehow doesn't get back to Krista that Will has spread this information, as she then proceeds to offer him a final three deal and calls him a best friend of hers. Me and Monica be final three, mm -hmm. you cut Monica. You should. just keep acting like you are. Exactly. I don't keep acting stupid. Will has done a great job so far, from making himself the most hated person in the house, to now when Julie asks him a question, he can successfully deflect it by singing a song that gets everyone else joining in. At first I was afraid, uh, I was petrified. I kept thinking I could never live with <laughs> Gloria you Gaynor. By my side. That's another and show. That's another show, nice. Will. And the votes are in. Kent is sent packing in a unanimous 4-0 vote, having Will successfully save himself while on the block for a second time. By a vote of 4-0, Kent, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Nicole wins head of household, and aside from week one when Mike Boogie won, this is the only other time the person winning head of household is almost guaranteed to not nominate him, since he has been befriending Nicole and giving her vital strategic information. Cole, your dream has come true. Congratulations. You are finally the head of household. Despite Krista making a final three deal with Will and saying he's a best friend, Will goes to Hardy and tells him that Krista is trying to convince Will to get Hardy out. Mind you, Will is getting Hardy out as well, the first chance he gets since that's what he promised to Shannon. However, it seems like Will is just trying to stir up drama while also keeping the target off of his back. It is hard to tell if this works right here, but Will is planting the seeds of doubt. Say this now that we're being around. Um, Krista said, what are you going to do if you win head of household? And I'm like, you know, nominate Hardy. And she's like, do what Shannon wanted you to do. And she just left it at that, you know? Something Will has been seeming to do more and more lately is how he is crafting a narrative in the diary room as he continually reminds us how he's lying to everyone and has told all of them from the beginning that he's doing this. While nothing has actually been shown of him going up to people and telling them he is being dishonest, he is playing it up in the diary room knowing that the jurors at home are seeing it. His goal isn't to sell himself as noble, but as someone who is consistent, even if it is consistently lying. I have claimed to be dishonest and evil and backstabbing from the beginning, and they're all now realizing that that's what they are. Later on, it sinks in that Hardy has indeed been betrayed by Krista. Krista then gets mad at Will because it has gotten back to her that he told Nicole everything. Will does his best to try and explain how it isn't as it seems, but it doesn't seem to ease Krista's frustrations at all. Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Like you're about to shoot me. She's looking at me like that. Okay, I'm getting out of the way. However, later on, he has a chat with Monica and Krista that effectively gets the heat off of his back, and it seems to be helped by the fact that he isn't head of household and isn't in a position to nominate either of them. I um, said, listen, um, let's have some others join us and help us learn about each other better. Um, and what I really meant was let's place the blame on a lot of other people besides me. Will then talks to Nicole, who then reveals to us that her and him have a secret pact that no one else knows about. They don't know about the secret pact about me and you. Okay. Nobody does. This ends up working out as Krista and Monica are nominated, 
and Will is safe. So I nominated you, Krista, and you, Monica. Let's take a moment to breathe from all the insanity of the strategy and look at the continued storyline of Will's loving animals and nature. America gets to vote for an animal to join the house guests for a week. And America picks a pot pig named Ophelia, even though it's a male pig. Its name is Ophelia, which becomes confusing for everyone. This pig ends up melting everyone's heart though, and one time even falls in the pool and Will saves him. He's in. Right. The pig literally jumped on her and slid off. It dropped to the bottom like a rock. So I had to jump in and save it. Next, we see Big Brother do a fun segment called How Will Met Nicole. And the editors clearly were having lots of fun here as we see the evolution of their relationship and how it has reached the point now where they have a secret pact and are protecting each other. Will has been working his way through the house, making everyone feel good about him, but we have yet to see him successfully make Bunky like him. However, this is quickly changed as while Will is jogging around the backyard, he openly offers Bunky an alliance and figures, hey, if everyone knows about it, then no one can be mad at him. Can you not be in alliance, Bunky? I'm 100% serious and everybody can know about it. Oh, you and me? I would love to be. I can't read it. Will then says that he I might actually trust Bunky the most out of all of his alliances. My two favorite are Will and Nicole and Will and Krista, but I don't trust either Krista nor do I trust Nicole, so I don't really know. Maybe I trust Bunky the most? Is that possible? Bunky seems to enjoy the new alliance, and Will and things have quickly turned around between them. So much so that when America votes for what they want to put in the backyard for the house guests, Bunky hopes that America picks new grass. Will says that if that happens, then everyone is shaving Bunky as punishment. And it's a fun moment, albeit a classic Will Jerk move. If we get new grass, we can water it, and we can sit out there and watch the grass grow. Now that's a good time. And I have to mow it. That's exercise. I don't want to do it. Yeah, let's shave him. If we get new grass, you have to shave your body. I, I, I concur. That's yeah, a fair penalty. Whole body. Thankfully, the house guests don't get the new grass and instead get a trampoline, which has Will acting like a little kid on Christmas morning. Just when I think America's choice can't go any worse, uh, something like this happens and you totally redeem yourself. We got a trampoline. Later on, Will is talking to Nicole about him wanting to vote Monica since he feels a closeness with Krista and doesn't want to vote for her. However, this doesn't go over well with Nicole and makes Will look weak. I just really want to get sympathy vote. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted two, two, and two different votes, yet I couldn't. I'm sorry, I'm just aggravated that now it's like you're changing. No, I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing anything. I just wanted to let you know, but I'm not changing anything. It is eviction night, but first, we get a segment from everyone about what they would do if they won the half million dollar prize. While everyone is saying what noble things they will do, Will says that he will blow the money on gold chains and jet skis. It comes across as fun and as arrogant. I would love to buy my brother a Harley. I think that'd be awesome. I know he would love it. And uh, just to see the expression on his face, it'd be awesome. I've already won. Uh, even if I don't win the half a million dollars, I am, have grown so much as a person. I'm gonna buy gold chains for my friends, jet skis. I'd buy a tombstone for my mom's grave. Jewelry, um, pork bellies. Money is easily found. What I want is fame. Krista is evicted with a three to zero vote and Will apologize to her. She seems to not blame him for his actions. By a vote of three to zero, Zero. Krista, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. It is even followed up in the next episode with how Will is legitimately crying, despite many times claiming over the course of the season that he's just a robot covered with human skin who feels no emotions. It's a human moment that touches Bunky. Will suspects he's probably going to be nominated this week, and he gets to work on making the one person in the house who hasn't said they like Will out loud. He, he works on making them like him. So Monica is rambling about something to Will when Will says that it's the smartest thing he has ever heard in this house. He thinks it is brilliant, but Monica isn't buying it. It is a good attempt though. Yeah. That's the smartest thing I've heard anyone say since I've been here. I don't even know what she was talking about. It just seemed like a good idea for me to say that and interject that comment at the time. You think I'm gonna go for the crunch? He ain't gonna suck him in. Oh, hell no. Bunky is telling Will about how he is upset with Hardy because Hardy knocked one of Bunky's balls over the wall after Bunky said not to. Now, what makes this interesting is that Will is in such favor with Bunky that Bunky has completely overlooked or forgotten that Will was helping Hardy with this by pitching him the balls from the trampoline. It's very impressive. Do not hit my juggling balls over the wall. Yeah, I don't want to 
people have been kidding, but I know that I can't hit anybody. Sure. Hardy is then talking to Monica and Bunky about how he wants Will gone and has always wanted him gone, hence why he has nominated Will every time. However, that is revisionist history, as Will has been the pawn both times he was nominated by Hardy. It is still not good that Hardy is saying this right before nominations, but it's not completely truthful either. Well, I have been saying that a long time ago. I know you have, but and how many times do I got to nominate the Get him out the door, nominate him twice. <laughs> Big Brother has a big twist filled deal to offer to each of the house guests. Basically, they can secretly accept money from Big Brother if they choose to put everyone on peanut butter and jelly for a few days. Shockingly, Hardy and Bunky, who both view themselves as noble and good people, take the deal. While Will denies the deal three times. He gets offered an initial deal, he then denies it, it gets better, he denies it, he gets better, he denies it. For once in my life, I'm gonna do the right thing and I'm not gonna accept the money. You sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Everyone finds out Bunky and Hardy accept the deal and are mad with them while Will says he didn't take it. And whoever did will look bad to the jury on TV, showing his true motivation for why he denied the deal. He takes this opportunity to frame Hardy as evil and not the noble person he tries to make himself out to be all the time. Whoever did this, the other house guests are gonna see it. So in yeah. the event that you show up in the finals, they'll never vote for you. It doesn't surprise me at all that he took the money. He's just a, uh, you know, a big liar. He's even a worse liar than me. And the worst part about it is he can't admit it. However, Will is extra nice to Bunky in the wake of everyone hating on Bunky. Even Bunky is beating himself up about this decision. The next head of household competition is a multi-part tournament that has the contestants in part one using RC cars to answer questions. The house guests get to practice with the RC cars before the competition, and Will takes the approach of crashing his car as much as possible. So much so that even when it comes down to the actual competition, he crashes his car into Nicole, who is not happy with him at all. Oh, Will, don't be a Please. He crashes the RC cars so many times on purpose that Big Brother bans him from them and won't let him talk at part two of the competition at all, even though Will dresses up like an auto mechanic to try and help people with their RC car woes. Big Brother banned me from playing with the cars uh, because of a couple small incidences that took place. Why does he have to break oh, every rule? Will. Every, he, that's all he can do is break rules. So I came out dressed as an auto mechanic. I really thought that they would maybe let me work with them a little bit. However, I was not allowed to touch any cars or even talk the whole day. Part two of the head of household competition comes down to Hardy and Bunky and with Hardy winning head of household for the third time and all the previous times he has won, he's nominated Will, but targeted someone else. It seems like Will and Hardy are on good terms. However, Will did secretly blow up Hardy's secret alliance not so long ago. So we'll see if that comes into uh, See if that comes into play here. Will continues to sell himself as easily beatable at the end to Nicole, and we even hear Bunky tell Monica that Will cannot win this game. I mean, I, the last three people are gonna be here the whole time. The chance of me winning the show is zero, so I certainly would like to be here the last three weeks. Who can you beat? You can beat Will, okay? Who are we kidding? I'm the weakest player in the house. Will has been trying to raise his value in the house so that people want to keep him, not only because he's beatable at the end, but because he is fun to hang out with. Will cranks up the charm on Hardy and Nicole recognizes what Will is doing, but it doesn't seem to matter since Hardy is ultimately making the call. The red pepper and the green pepper live in peace. The lemons and the limes, they live in peace. Why can't the onions be together? Hardy offers Will a deal to stay. If Will wins the next competition, then he promises to nominate Hardy and Monica so that Nicole, with the only vote, can vote out Monica. Will, of course, takes this deal and immediately tells us that he has no plans to keep the deal. If you give me your word that if you win HOH that you won't nominate both of both Nicole and I, we'll keep you here for another week. All right. Almost a carbon copy story from when Kent offered a very similar deal. I promised um, Hardy and Nicole that I wouldn't nominate them both. I clearly would nominate them both. I would stab them both in the back and lead them to bleed, you know, on the kitchen floor and I wouldn't even clean it up. It is nomination time and Will predictably is nominated, but shockingly so is Bunky, who the house views as a big threat for winning some competitions recently and for working out a lot. It seems like Will is the pawn based on his deal with Hardy, but as we said before, pawns can go home. Will, I nominated you uh, because not nominating you would be like Christmas without presents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Will drives Nicole insane storyline continues with the house being tasked with an arts and crafts task. Nicole hates, emphasize hates arts and crafts, so much so that she lets Will make it her doll for her because she doesn't want to do it. Will takes the 12 year old boy route on this one and decides to draw Nicole's um. What are you doing? 
I'm putting a bathing suit so, over that. I'm just trying to get the body drawn where the stuff is. You're gonna put nipples on a doll. This causes Nicole to get raging mad. It seems funny, and it kind of is, but Nicole's reaction makes it really dumb and shows how Will is just driving her up the wall. Will then frames us now Nicole is depressing and not a good person to be living with. This is further emphasized when Will wins his first competition of the season to go on a helicopter ride over the city. And it's with Bunky. And Nicole gets majorly depressed that she can't go on this helicopter trip. Nicole is clearly the most depressed person I've ever met in my life. And I don't want to sit alone with her at any time, any place, anywhere. Bunky and Will go on the helicopter ride and Bunky says that it was fun to do with Will. He was a great companion and uh, we had a terrific time. He was grinning from ear to ear and we had a lot of fun taking pictures. After the helicopter award, Nicole confronts Will about his behavior. She says how she is tired of him acting up, apologizing, but then just returning to his behavior 10 minutes later. If you sit there and go, you're right, Nicole, you're right, you're right. And then you're gonna turn around and do the same shit again. I swear to God, I'm gonna kill you. Okay. Will does his best to smooth things over, but he is on thin ice. It is time for eviction and Bunky is sent home two to one. However, that one vote means that Will finally received his only vote all game and it was from Monica. I choose to evict Bunky. And you know, I love you, man. It's. It's just, it's because it's strategy. I hope you understand that. It is time for the final four head of household competition. Will, Monica, and Nicole have to lay on a bed and keep one hand on their key at all times. If they ever let go, then they are out. Simple enough. However, not long into the competition do we find out that Nicole's husband has sent a plane to fly overhead the Big Brother house with a banner that makes her think her marriage could possibly be over and furthers the insanity that Will has been causing to her. It isn't incredibly clear on the show why her husband does this, but from what can be gathered, Nicole was possibly playing footsie in the hot tub with the guys, but her foot wasn't on their foot, if you know what I'm saying. Hardy claims that nothing happened, but Will keeps silent. Anyways, Nicole is not in the right headspace at all, and later on in the competition, Your hand was all the way off the thing, I saw it. I'm sorry, that was my fault, but I totally saw it. She loses, and Will is partially to blame. At this point, Will feels confident enough in Monica that he gives up the competition for a mystery prize. Will the gamble pay off? I came into this house to gamble. All right, no, sit down, sit down. The immediate answer seems to be no, meaning the mystery prize that he won for taking his hand off the key is just a massive prop from an earlier Big Brother challenge. However, we learn that Will confessed to Nicole that his goal is to always throw head of household competitions. It would be very easy for me to come in here and say that I have to win this head of household to compete, but losing head of household competitions can be very advantageous. Since whoever has a household or gets second place seems to be targeted as threats. And I don't think it's any secret to you is that I've thrown competitions, you know, and I threw competitions purposely resulting in the expulsions of my friends. Her knowing this and then seeing him lose on purpose after making a deal with Hardy makes her go crazy. This backs up what Will has been telling us about her. He proceeds to suck up to her and once again gets back into her good graces. We then learn that Hardy feels betrayed that Will threw the competition after cutting a deal with him. I made a deal with Will to let him stay. He decides to throw it and take what's behind door number one. It is nomination time and Monica nominates Hardy and Nicole which for the first time all game puts Will in a power position as he has the only vote to evict this week. Safe. We then get a surprise segment. Four survivors from the first two seasons of that show, Sue Hawk, Jervis Pearson, Alicia Calloway, and Jeff Varner are entering the house for one day to hang out and have some competitions. We hear from each of them about their thoughts on the house guests. No one likes Nicole and everyone praises Will, with Jeff even calling him a little G God. Will is my God. Because <laughs> he doesn't take any of this seriously. He makes fun of it. He's making fun of himself. Before the survivors enter, however, we hear from Nicole how she is simply flabbergasted that Will is doing well despite throwing competitions on purpose and finding it hilarious. The lying, deceivious, satanic of the planet who lost every competition on purpose and thinks it's funny. It seems to blow her mind. The house guests then walk into the backyard to find out that there is now a winter wonderland 
complete with stuffed bear that Will uses to pretend to tell Nicole to eat meat and stop being a vegetarian. You have a little respect about how I feel about animals, thank you. Rrr, Nicole, don't, don't touch be a vegetarian anymore. It's okay to eat meat. Right after that, Will tells us how Hardy and Nicole were dumb for believing that Will was actually going to try and win the final four HOH. Hardy and Nicole really should have evicted me last week. I don't think that's any secret. Anyone who believes me at this point is dumb. This has some merit since he has told Nicole his strategy but it is still him being a jerk for jerk's sake here. The survivors finally come into the house and everyone is loving it. Nicole knows exactly who they are and claims to have seen every season, which is a weird flex since there's only been two seasons so far, but she's claiming to be a super fan. Will has never seen Survivor, but says that he already likes all of them more than everyone else in the house after five minutes. Hey, Will, you're making me sick because you don't know any of these people. And no, I but I just like them more than I like all you guys, so it's just nice. <laughs> While talking to Jeff, Monica then reveals that she respects Will for being himself. Because I know who he is. When I came in this house, I knew everybody in this house, so I knew how he rolled. He put his cards on the table. Everybody else trying to roll differently, but he put his cards on the table, so I respect that. I Use vote to evict Nicole. Use people. <laughs> it is time for bed and Jeff and Alicia are in bed together. Now it isn't clear if Will knows this at this point, but since he's never seen Survivor, probably not. However, Jeff is gay. So Will seeing Jeff and Alicia in bed makes him ask this question. Hey, just for ratings, could you guys bang? Will. <laughs> <laughs> is that unreasonable? A theme of this special episode is comparing Survivor and Big Brother. While the survivors are talking about real things they had to deal with, Will makes silly comparisons to what he has had to go through so far. One day they had a chicken in a cage and a Komodo dragon came and ripped up the chicken and killed it and ate it. Well, one day when I was at the pool, Ophelia snuck in the house and ate a whole loaf of white bread. Not much else happens in the Survivor special episode when it comes to Will's story, but if you are curious about it, I would recommend watching it. It is episode 26 of season two of Big Brother and it makes for a fun diversion. It is eviction time and Will, with the only vote, I finally de decided to evict Hardy. No problem. Fulfilling the promise he made to Shannon when she was evicted. It is now crunch time. The final three are Will, Nicole, and Monica. And as of right now, Nicole has played a good strategic game, but has burnt a lot of bridges along the way. Monica has mostly stayed out of things and has hung out being truly under the radar. Whoever wins head of household will pick who they sit next to at the end of the game. The final head of household competition is a three-parter. Will gets through part one and is in first place, which is surprising given his stance on winning head of household competitions. The house guests are then given a bunch of toys and Will gets a car, which has him making this joke. Kent and I both now have a new car. Hurry, hurry, get out of the car. There's a competition. I'm staying in here. I need a new car. He also gets a metal detector and proceeds to go around the house like a child, pointing out what is and is not metal. He is clearly bored out of his mind. Metal. 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 Not metal. America gets to choose who has an internet chat with them. They pick Will, which seems like maybe they will like him for choosing him. At first when I learned that America chose me to chat with, I was very excited. But then I realized that they didn't want to chat with me, they wanted to yell at me. However, he takes it all with a smile and makes jokes while framing Nicole as mean. Will, what do you say to those who call you a mean lying bastard? I usually say, hey, good morning, Monica. Good morning, Nicole. After the chat, Nicole asks how it went, and Will says, eh, it went good, and that he actually defended her attitude by saying, she just cares about them so much. That's why she acts the way she does. Will is just blowing smoke, but Nicole has no idea. How do you deal with Nicole and her complaining? And what was your answer? She complains for the benefit of the people in the house. Right after that, he takes the opportunity to now frame Nicole as evil and the reason everyone is being sent home. Because she knows the gig is up. She knows that I know that she's evil. So she, at this time, is very happy that um, she hasn't been discovered yet. After round two of the head of household competition, he's still in first, but then loses in round three to Nicole, who becomes the last head of household and picks who sits next to her at the final two. Congratulations, Nicole. With a score of seven to six, you are the final and most powerful head of household. Before Nicole picks who goes home, we hear from all the former house guests about what they think of those left in the game. A few of them point out how Will is much more shrewd and cutthroat than they originally thought. I really had no idea that Will was as shrewd as he is. I trusted Will and I know he cut my throat in the game. Nicole evicts Monica bringing Will to the final two. And unfortunately, that's Will. Monica, I'm sorry, I have to evict you. Okay. 
Monica ends up loving Will's goodbye message and doesn't like Nicole at all. Monica, I challenge you. I have really, in the last few weeks, really appreciated who you are. I've really fallen in love with who Monica is, and I want to be friends after this. You ain't got the word. I think you're... It is now time for the jury to ask questions of each of the final two house guests and hopefully get answers that will help them make decisions on who should win the game. Now, if you're more familiar with Survivor, this is very similar to a final travel council, but it's a lot quicker and a lot less tense due to the fast pace. Both Nicole and Will get to negate one of the jury's votes before the votes are revealed, meaning that only four votes is needed to win. Before questioning, we hear from the jurors that they all basically agree that Will is rude and arrogant. Will only loves himself. And that's sad. He was rude because he is so arrogant. <laughs> Cheryl asks Will why he should win, and Will essentially says that he isn't sure if he should win. However, he does get her vote and is up one to zero. So I had to base it on who I felt played the best. And Will, I felt you played the best. Autumn is next, and she asks Will what qualifies him to judge others. He says his life experiences do. Autumn votes for Nicole and is now one to one. I voted for Nicole. Shannon asks Will, where does he see himself in six months? He says, hopefully painting a master bedroom with her at a cute beach house. She of course votes for him, but her vote is negated by Nicole, keeping it one to one. I obviously voted to eliminate Shannon's vote, obviously. Mike is fourth and he asked Will if he would fund a music video. Will says yes, and there was no way Mike wasn't going to vote for him anyways, making it now two to one. I voted for. Will. Kent is next and Will tells Kent that Kent had everything figured out, including Will. Basically, he just sucks up to Kent and earns his vote, making it three to one. I voted for Will to win. Hardy then stiffly asks Will why he should pick him to win over Nicole. And Will says that Hardy shouldn't pick him and that he won't pick him. While he is right, he probably never had Hardy's vote. He still should be working for everyone's vote. And his lead is shrunk three to two. I voted for. Thank you. I voted for. Nicole to win. Bunky is next and he wants to know how much money will Will donate in the aftermath of 9-11. Will says none and it's not a good look. However, Bunky's vote is negated by Will, leaving the lead stuck at three to two. So I chose to eliminate Bunky because I thought he would vote for Nicole. Krista is eighth and Will tells her that he feels responsible for her, Mike and Shannon going home and is sorry. Monica is last and Will says that he has nothing but good things to say about her. I'm not gonna pretend at the beginning we got along because we didn't, but at the end, uh, you really proved yourself. Uh, and in my mind, you know, I have nothing but wonderful things to say about you, Monica. Will then gives a closing speech that starts off okay, but by the end is lambasting the jury. It isn't clear what his goal is with doing this, but it actually ticks them off. So if you're not happy with me, it just might be yourself you're not happy with. So don't place all the blame of this on me. Everyone needs to look within themselves. However, it turns out it doesn't matter as Krista and Monica did vote for him and he wins five to two. <laughs> I just have to make it official. Congratulations, Will. By a vote of five to do, you are the winner of Big Brother 2. So let's break this down. How is Will as a character? Will was goofy, arrogant, and just a guy seeking a fun time once Shannon was evicted. At times, he cared about people, but more importantly, he cared about himself a lot more. He almost single-handedly made the show entertaining once Mike Boogie left, and he was a joy to watch, even if he was a jerk. Despite his perception as an evil doctor, he really did a lot to overcome this perception of him, and depending on your point of view, in the end, was hilarious. Out of 51 character moments shown on the show, 25 were heroic and 26 were villainous, making Will Kirby a villain in Big Brother 2. Now, how was Will as a strategist? Will started off the game slow and not doing anything in an attempt to win. At one point, he, he even considers quitting. However, once Shannon goes home, he completely changes his game and becomes buddies with everyone while having a good time. He cuts deals and spreads seeds of doubt while narrating the whole thing from the diary room. It wasn't a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a fun one. Out of 83 strategic moments shown on the show, 51 were smart and 33 were dumb, making Will Kirby a smart strategist on Big Brother 2. Next time, we will be reviewing the entirety of Big Brother 2 and how it successfully flipped the script and set the show on a path that has it still going strong to this day. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please support me and this channel on Patreon 
Your financial support makes this channel possible. Thank you for watching.